Hello, my name's Mark O'Mara and I want to talk for a couple of minutes about a way that I'm teaching Macbeth this year. Uh, this is, I think, the third time that I've taught Macbeth and this time I'm trying something a bit different. We are still reading through the play, but this time, to make it a bit more interesting, we are putting Macbeth on trial. Macbeth is a fantastic play and lots of English teachers love it and lots of just people love it. It's got all these really interesting themes in it, you know, the nature of ambition and what it means to be brave and kind of the divine right of kings and what it means about justice and personal responsibility and that's probably only scratching the surface of it. You really could talk about Macbeth for your whole career. Fantastic text. But sometimes it's tempting to try and explain all of these things to your students as you go. And I actually don't think that's the best way to do it. I think it's best to have one lens to see it through, but do that in a sophisticated enough way that you can then repurpose that understanding once they've got it to other lenses to see it through. So the lens that I'm using this time is about basically who is responsible and basically putting Macbeth on trial and say, is Macbeth guilty of causing, and I've actually realised I've missed that, is Macbeth guilty is the missing word? guilty of causing the deaths in this story. So we're constructing a trial. Now the point of this trial is to prepare for it. This is where the learning will go on and there's probably a small amount of learning in the actual presentation of the trial but I'm not planning to spend a lot of time on that. At the heart of this is still the traditional table reading of the play. Obviously that has challenges in terms of getting people to actually lean into the text. It's hard 400 years later. You know, everybody finds this. It's challenging language. But you've still got to do it because it's too hard for most students to just read it and get the meaning out of it. Most adults need to rely on the notes. So you've still, I'm still going to do the traditional table reading as the core of interacting with this text. I've then got the students to self-select into the prosecution and defence. And these were reasonably... The defence team's a bit bigger than the prosecution, and interestingly, the prosecution is mainly the young women in the class, and the defence is mainly the young men. There's a couple of exceptions to that rule, but it was an interesting split, not necessarily what I expected. So, we've got them into two teams. We all read as a big table reading, but then after we've done a block of reading, we break into our defence team and our prosecution team. Then what they do is they go through and they collect evidence to try and, you know, convict him or get him acquitted. So we've just done the first couple of scenes and they've gone through looking for stuff that they could bring into the argument. And I have to say, they've actually done a really, really good job of this. I was a bit nervous about whether it would work, but it actually worked really well. So not only are they collecting quotes, but they're then going through and actually writing brief notes saying why this quote's valuable, what it proves. So it's not just evidence in isolation, and they're not just going to retell the story, but this is what this proves. Because we're trying to prove something concrete, that he's responsible, he's guilty, or he isn't. And it also gets them to state a nice, clear contention. So while they're doing this, they're actually constructing an argument. And by the time they get to the end, I hope they'll probably have five or six really compelling arguments and can narrow it down. And that's fantastic for when you get to a formal essay or an assessment situation. Because some students really struggle to kind of, well, what am I going to say? Well, they'll have a whole stack of things to say that they've collected with their teams. The reasons I'm doing this. First and foremost, I want this to be interesting. First of all, I love this play, and I think they'll love it too once they get into it, but I'm hoping that by being part of the team and working with your friends and actually making it a bit kind of relevant and punchy, then they'll be engaged to actually appreciate what a good play it is. The second thing that I'm interested in is helping them work with each other. This is not something I've done very well with my classes, I must confess. Um, I don't really facilitate teamwork as much as I'd like to, and I'm hoping this will be a change for that. I guess ultimately what I want is for them to have a really deep understanding of this task. So I'm hoping if I can engage them, get them excited about it, then they'll have that deep understanding. So that's basically what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I've only just started, so I'm not sure how it's going to go. But um, there's my idea for anybody to grab if they want. And you also might like to put um, Macbeth on trial and see if it works for you.